The Center for Intersectional Justice was founded in 2017 um, and we are, um, our mission is to advance um, the legal and policy framework on anti-discrimination in Europe to make it more inclusive through an intersectional approach. Um, we do advocacy, research and trainings related to intersectional discrimination. Intersectionality uh, means uh, approaching and addressing and analyzing uh, forms of systemic inequalities from uh, different angles, meaning that we don't focus on single axis issues, for example, just on gender equality or on racial equality or on um, uh, equality for LGBTQI communities, but we look at how all those systems and all those identities intersect to create unique dynamics. Um, without an intersectional approach, it means that uh, gaining rights for certain communities will um, most automatically lead to less rights for others. I give an example. Uh, if you have a lack of intersectional approach in LGBT LGBTQI community organizing and, and, uh, and, and, and rights and, and campaigns, um, it, the likelihood of marginalizing certain communities, um, especially migrant communities and Muslim communities, will increase. Um, the same can be said about um, organizing a feminist movement without uh, including the claims of um, gender non-conforming people, trans people, and focusing on the archetypical category women, which mostly um, is white women, privileged women from um, middle class, <clears throat> Christian, um, without disabilities, etc. Then we lose um, the complexity of um, systemic inequalities and can only reach a very small number of people. Hate speech is but one dimension of discrimination and inequalities and racism generally, or um, you know systems of domination, so it can be homophobia or sexism uh, or ableism. Um, and it's important to look at it only from a symptom uh, instead of a root cause. And uh, if we want to make sure that we um, bring the systemic aspect of hierarchization and social hierarchies, uh, so social hierarchies and social inequalities. It's important to look at hate speech as um, just power. It means that people who can enforce hate speech um, have the economic, political, and cultural power to do so. So it means that it should be embedded in a wider framework. Um, a system of domination is not just hate speech towards a group, but it's hate speech, prejudice, and the power to enforce these pre prejudices. Um, so it means that approaching hate speech from an intersectional perspective means that um, we will look at how a certain group of people, um, by being affected by, by a type of hate speech, is also linked to other communities. So it means that homophobic slurs, for example, will automatically impact on migrant communities at some point. The only thing that we need to do with an intersectional approach is to connect the dots and understand the underlying hierarchies and the underlying ideologies which dehumanize some people over others. So automatically the dehumanization of gender non-conforming and non-straight people is intrinsically linked to the dehumanization of people with disabilities and of um, people, non-white people. Why? Because the ideology that underlies these um, social hierarchies creates a norm and creates uh, a norm of humanity and a norm of superiority. Um, and the deviations from these norms are all connected with each other. So it means that um, the illusion that at some point, for example, LGBTQI people may gain more rights is just um, a stage uh, and not something that is longstanding and sustainable in gaining rights for everybody. For example, if we look at the gender pay gap, if you want to make sure that we um, tackle inequalities with regards to pay between men and women, it's absolutely necessary to look at the stratifications by class, uh, race, nationality, migration background within the category women. So it's not enough to just look at, okay, um, do men earn more than women, but also to look at how different women earn differently. Because the main um, policies that are put forward against gender inequality is 
cleaning and taking care of children, taking care of the elderly to other women instead of having a reorganization in the home between men and women and looking at and challenging the heteronormative division of labor. So an intersectional approach um, that has been very positive and extremely successful has been to um, create solidarity between uh, different types of women and also including men um, uh, in redefining gender roles in the home to have a positive uh, rep uh, repercussion on the labor market and lower gender, uh, gender pay gaps.